Welcome to Tech Talk. My name is Nana Luisa Linde. I'm Vice President for European Government Affairs at Microsoft. I'm here today with my guest, Natasha Crampton, Microsoft's Chief Responsible AI Officer. Welcome, Natasha. Thanks so much. It's great to be here. So we're here to talk today about the responsible development and use of AI. Um, and uh, I'm thinking in your role, you know, what does that uh, entail and what does a normal day look like for you? So my job in a nutshell is to really put our AI principles into practice across the company. And that involves doing things like guiding our engineering teams and the way in which they build our products so that we can be sure that they are fair and private and secure, reliable and safe. Um, so we do provide that guidance to our engineering teams and we do a lot more to build up the ecosystem around that as well. So we help with training them, we help with making sure that we've got responsible AI champs, people who have um, special expertise in these matters so that when they need help, they can raise their hand uh, and get that extra assistance. I also have the privilege of, of not just working internally within Microsoft, but contributing to the conversation that we really need to have externally about what are those new norms and laws and standards that we need to develop AI systems responsibly. And I find that those external conversations on those re really important topics help to influence what we do internally. Mm. And we also try and help share what we have learned in the internal program with our customers and our partners and with regulators as well who are, who are out there doing the hard work of trying to figure out where the right guardrail should be for this new technology. And Microsoft developed a few years ago these six responsible AI principles. How do you ensure that we follow those when developing the products? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, across the whole industry, um, very many organizations started with principles. And principles are really essential in setting the North Star for this type of effort. But principles alone are really not enough. So one of the major things that we've done in this space is that we've taken our six principles that guide this effort, and we've really broken them down into concrete guidance for our engineering teams. So we lay out in our responsible AI standard, which we both use internally, but we've also made available publicly to share what we've learned. Um, a set of uh, processes um, and outcomes that teams need to achieve when they um, are building new AI systems. So in a very practical sense, what this means is we take a high level principle like accountability and we say at Microsoft, being accountable means doing an impact assessment when you're uh, designing your system at the very outset. It means making sure you've got proper processes for human oversight. It means making sure that you've got proper processes for feedback on your product. So we've been rolling this standard out across the company. Uh, we're actually on our second version of it already. And it's really starting to help us get to that systematic approach to implementing those principles on a day-to-day -day basis with our engineering teams. You touched a little bit upon it before, but I was curious to know how important is this uh, engagement with external uh, stakeholders in that process, regulators, civil society, it's critically important. In fact, I believe fundamentally we cannot do this work well unless we have very broad conversations with our stakeholders. Um, you know, when we're designing products, a core part of what we do at the impact assessment phase of, of the process is to think deeply about who the stakeholders are for the system. And I think unless we have a broad view of who the stakeholders are, there's no way that we'll be able to build systems that meet uh, the needs of the world and not just the people who are building them. And you know, I never come away from a conversation with civil society or academia or members of uh, the industry, of course, government uh, stakeholders as well, with, without fresh insights about uh, the concerns that may be raised, but also the new insights about the way in which we can sort of co-develop the solutions here, because these are whole of society issues. Um, we're very keen to contribute all that we uh, know and have learned in this process, but we really need to have 
uh, societal conversations about where the line should be drawn so that we can secure these incredibly exciting and beneficial uses of the technology while also guarding against its, its misuse. And talking about misuse, um, what are some of the challenges that you are facing, you and your team, when developing these uh, AI solutions and trying to um, apply the principles that we have developed? Yeah, so we want to make sure that we are addressing, you know, a broad range of uh, concerns that there may be with any particular implementation of the technology. So, you know, we've got our principles to guide us here. We've got, you know, fair, our commitments to fairness, reliability and safety, making sure that the systems work well in expected conditions as well as foreseeable situations where things might get a little bit hairy. We want to make sure that privacy and security is baked in from the outset. We want to make sure that we are building uh, the systems in an inclusive and accessible way so that people uh, of, of all experiences, all walks of life can make the most of these systems. So our principles really guide where we start this inquiry and we want to make sure that we take account of the fact that with emerging technologies there are sometimes new uh, areas of risk that we want to make sure that we properly assess, right? It's very important to us, for example, that we remember that you know, AI systems are built by people and they're also used by people. So one area that we I think is an ongoing research effort um, that is a very important area for us to focus on is this whole area of human AI interaction. How can we make sure that we get the very best out of humans and machines working together? Because fundamentally that's Microsoft's vision for, for how we embrace AI. It's all about how we can amplify human potential, but we need to be aware of the fact that, uh, you know, there can be sort of over-reliance, human biases that come into play as well. So we need to figure out the optimum ways of combining the best of humans and the best of machines. And that's, I think, a really important direction for, for future research and product building efforts. So we talked a lot about some of the challenges. Um, what are the benefits of AI to consumers, to businesses in Europe? There are many, and I think uh, it, it starts with, you know, the sort of productivity enhancements that you can get out of using this technology and really putting it to work for you. So if we look at, for example, the new Bing, which is our AI powered search experience, I'm pretty excited about the research assistant that I now have in the form of Bing, which allows me to get, you know, really summarized, easy to digest answers. And that through the uh, sources that are made available when we, you get a response, allows me to go off and do further research, ask more questions. Uh, in a very practical sense, I find that type of uh, uh, product very useful on a day-to-day -day basis just in my everyday working life. Me too. <laughs> yeah and I, and I think you know many of our customers and other stakeholders that we engage with think of it as in exactly the same way. It can be this amazing first draft partner if you're an NGO and wanting to engage your member base this is an amazing tool to use. If you're a politician and you need to communicate with your constituents again wonderful first draft of that uh, communication. So I'm excited about the ways in which it can help me in my daily life um, and, and our customers and, and stakeholders as well just do more, um, which, is, which is really exciting. And then I'm also very, very sort of um, excited and, and, and sort of increasingly um, not just, you know, hopeful, but actually determined to kind of see through these really game-changing use cases that can help us solve some of the societal problems that we that we face. So, you know, you can think about some of the sustainability applications of, uh, of AI. So we've got vast amounts of data to really truly get our hands around the climate change uh, problems that we have in front of us. We actually really need to harness much more data and have a deeper understanding of our ecosystems than any humans are capable of doing alone. So those sorts of use cases where we can harness the power of AI to address big societal problems, sustainability, healthcare, um, the enabling force of AI in education. These are the things that really excite me. 
You mentioned already that we released the first trial version of the new Bing. Yes. Um, and you talked a little bit about your excitement. Is there anything more you want to say about that and maybe some of the challenges we are facing with that, that trial version? Sure. So, you know, the new Bing is absolutely a transformative experience and it's so exciting to be able to bring, you know, some innovation to, to search, uh, which has been in the same sort of format for quite a long time at this point. And from a responsible AI point of view, we've engaged in a very comprehensive effort across the company to bring that product to life, you know, starting with interrogating the raw model, partnering with OpenAI so we really understood the capabilities and the limitations of that model to building, you know, measurement infrastructure across the company so we could very clearly see how the product was behaving and making sure that it was working in line with our expectations. And as you mentioned, you know, a core part of our responsible AI strategy was also making sure that we had this incremental release uh, process because as comprehensive as our process was before we released and uh, having been a core part of it, I know quite how vast that uh, effort was, you're always going to learn more from exposure of this product to, to real people in the real world who want to explore the product and, and see where its edges are as well. And so there have been some really valuable learnings uh, once we've put this product uh, in front of, you know, small groups of people through this uh, uh, incremental release product. And we have had some valuable learnings. So, for example, we, we learned that with a sort of long conversations, there were times when the model started behaving in a way that was not consistent with the way that we designed for. And so... Having had those learnings, it was uh, I was encouraged to see our sort of mitigation systems kick in straight away. We were able to address issues and take those learnings with us as we continue to refine and enhance the way that the service works going forward. I wanted to ask you a final question, which is in the EU, regulators are rolling out new regulation for AI. Is there anything that, in your opinion, they should uh, think about when forming their final positions on how to regulate this area? So we continue to support these core objectives of the AI Act. I think it's an important piece of legislation to make sure that AI is developed and deployed responsibly. I think these recent you know, product breakthroughs, whether it's ChatGPT or, or the new Bing, um, they've come at an important moment because I think it helps uh, the legislators and stakeholders more broadly engaged in those dialogues think about how to best future-proof the legislation, knowing what we do about how quickly the technology is developing and also how society's expectations are changing. So I think for us, one of the important things to preserve in the AI Act, which has been there from the very beginning, is this focus on high-risk use cases. Um, already Europeans uh, uh, are embracing this technology for these high-value but low-risk use cases. And so I think there's good reason to want to preserve um, those sorts of scenarios and really have the legislation hone in on those high risk scenarios where there is broad agreement that we definitely need specific practices to make sure that those are designed and deployed in accordance with uh, the commitments in the AI Act and that they are in fact safe and rights respecting. So I think that ongoing focus on high risk use cases is really important. Thank you for so much for coming. It's been a pleasure.